Well, hi there and good morning. So check it out, look where I am. I'm in the church. A Little bit of a different change of scenery here for Liturgy of the Word uh, with children, but there's a really good reason for that this weekend. And that is that this weekend we celebrate a very special feast day. It is the feast of Our Lady of the Angels. And that is the name of our church. So it's our church's feast day. So Mary is Our Lady of the Angels, and we're going to learn a little bit more about her today. So my friends, let's begin as we always do. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you trusted Mary, our Lady of the Angels, with your most precious gift, the gift of your Son. Thank you for sending your Son to live among us. Grant that we may always feel the same strength and wisdom of Mary when we are called to do your will. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wisdom sings her own praises. Before her own people, she proclaims her glory. In the assembly of the Most High, she opens her mouth. In the presence of his hosts, she declares her worth. In the midst of her people, she shall be exalted and shall be revered in the holy assembly. In the multitude of the elect, she shall be praised, and among the blessed, she shall be blessed. I spread out my branches like a terebinth, my branches so bright and so graceful. I bud forth delights like the vine. My blossoms become fruit, fair and rich. I am the mother of fair love, of fear, of knowledge, and of holy hope. In me is all grace of way and of truth. In me all hope of life and strength. Come to me, all you that yearn for me, and be filled with my fruits. You will remember me as sweeter than honey, better to have than the honeycomb. He who eats of me will still hunger. He who drinks of me will thirst for more. He who obeys me will not be put to shame. He who serves me will never fail. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. God sent the angel Gabriel to the town of Nazareth in Galilee with a message for a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to Joseph from the family of King David. The angel greeted Mary and said, You are truly blessed. The Lord is with you. Mary was confused by the angel's words and wondered what they meant. Then the angel told Mary, Don't be afraid. God is pleased with you, and you will have a son. His name will be Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God Most High. The Lord God will make him king, and his ancestor David, as his ancestor David was, he will rule the people of Israel forever, and his kingdom will never end. The Gospel of the Lord. So for our reflection, I thought that it might be kind of cool to come and sit over here by the window. And this window is called Our Lady of the Angels. So that is because of the beautiful uh, image of Mary that is right in the center of it. And you may not have realized all the time that that was Mary because it's a little bit of an abstract image and that's okay. But that's a surprise that is really beautiful about this window, is that when you look at it for a little while, suddenly, surprise, there she is, that's Mary. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about surprises today. Um, who loves a surprise, right? Surprises are awesome. Surprise parties, those are the best. Have you ever had a surprise party? You know, what did that feel like? So much fun, right? And everybody jumps out and yells, surprise! And, you know, at first you're a little startled, but then you realize that all of your friends and family are there to see you and they have gathered just for you. And it's like the best thing ever. So surprises are usually just that. They're associated with happiness and joy. But sometimes surprising surprises can be just a little bit challenging too. Sometimes things don't go exactly the way we plan and the surprise is that we're going to have to figure out a different way to do things or we're going to have to figure out how to get through something that we weren't necessarily expecting. So that can be a surprise too. So the gospel story that you just heard um, and the one that we use for this feast day today is a really cool story. It's about the angel Gabriel and angel Gabriel comes and surprises Mary with some really big news. And he tells her that all she has to do is say yes and something wonderful was going to happen. Her surprise would be a wonderful gift from God in the form of a new baby, God's son, Jesus. And that with her, yes, Jesus would come into the world and live among us. And so Mary was very surprised by this because she was very young. She was probably only about 14 or 15 years old. And she really didn't know if she knew how to be a mom or if she was ready for that kind of stuff. And so, that was a little bit of a challenge, part of the surprise, right? It was a little scary, but she decided to say yes anyway. And do you know why she did that? Because she put her faith in God, because she knew that our loving God would take care of her no matter what, and that if he was asking this of her, then he must have a plan. And she decided that she was going to put her faith in him and go with that plan. So I'm betting that this past spring, 
you all had quite the surprise too. When you learned that school was ending early, uh, would finish up online, but that really essentially your summer break was starting early, at least a couple months early, right? And that was a surprise. And I'm sure that surprise came with quite a bit of excitement and joy. So I have to confess that I pretty much felt the same way <laughs> because for me, it meant, hmm, I wonder if I can sleep in a little bit more and I'll have some more time to do the things that I want to do and I can hang at home. And I was pretty excited about this surprise uh, break that I was given as well. But I'm wondering if you guys are also a little bit like me in that it wasn't very long before that surprise turned into a challenge. And the challenge was that suddenly I had too much time on my hands and I was feeling a little bit bored and we couldn't really go anywhere or do anything. And there just wasn't that much stuff to do in the house, right? And you know what? I was really missing the people that I work with and I really, really missed the CASA. I missed being here and seeing all of you. So the surprise for me turned into a challenge and I'm betting that maybe it did for some of you as well. I'm wondering if there came a point where you realized that you missed your friends and maybe now that school is getting ready to start back up, maybe you're realizing that you're missing some of your extra activities like sports or playing in a band or anything else that's extra that you do that you can't do right now. So you see the surprise of an extra long summer turned into a little bit of a challenge. And I think we can all relate with that. Mary can relate with that as well. But here's the thing, and this is why it's so important that we have a good relationship with Mary. Because she can relate with our challenges, she can also teach us about her faith. And she can remind us that all we have to do is take the surprises as they come, both good and challenging, and trust in God that everything is going to work out the way it should. St. Francis understood this too. And that's why we have this amazing feast day today. Our Lady of the Angels is because St. Francis saw in Mary the kind of faith that he knew he was going to need to have to get through some of the challenges and the joys of his life. All the surprises that come our way each and every day. So that's why we celebrate today. That is why we celebrate the day of Our Lady of the Angels, when Mary said yes, when Mary agreed to be surprised no matter what, and when Mary showed us what true faith looks like. Together, let us make our profession of faith. We believe in God the Father, who made the whole world. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was born in Bethlehem and lived among us, who died on the cross for us and rose from the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who brings life and love to us all. We believe that the church is one family and that one day we will share everlasting life with God in heaven. Amen. Knowing that when we pray, our prayers are heard, let us call upon God for our needs. For the church that teaches her people 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are in need, that we may notice them and take time to help them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the courage to say yes to God, even when we don't understand everything that is being asked of us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that like Mary, we will be wise in knowing what promises to make and faithful in keeping those promises. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, our Maker and Savior, hear the prayers of your children through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me on this extremely special feast day. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I hope that those of you who are starting school this week have wonderful new experiences, even if they aren't what we quite expected. And I hope that you will remember that no matter what, God will take care of you. Have faith, my friends, and I will see you next weekend. Bye-bye.